Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first show. My name is Frank Lincoln, and I'm joined, as always, by my beautiful co-host, Joe Murray. Uh, welcome to the show, episode 87. How we doing? Are you gonna are you gonna come over? <laughs> did you like my Did you like my pose? It was very good. Hey, um, quick quick shout out, real quick, um, to my mustache. Yeah. Check this out. Ooh, that camera. Ooh, ooh, ooh. that camera. Ooh, that <laughs> camera. <laughs> Check that out. <laughs> that is on my face. That is really, it's right, it's right up in there. It's right, it's right up it's in there. It's looking real good right it's, now. It's much longer than I thought it was going to be already. Have you trimmed it yet? I have not trimmed it and I don't think I'm going to. Nah, don't. I'm not going to touch it. I'm going to like try and train it so that it like goes out to the sides. Yeah. You know? um, so yeah, uh, it's Movember. I, I should say yes. that. I'm going to put a link in the description. Um, I'm taking donations for Movember. Yeah, yeah. Um, second year in a row that I'm doing this. Uh, basically, it's for men's mental health and prostate cancer and a bunch of other things. They take donations and then they uh, give that money out for funding. Mm -hmm. um, you can either grow a mustache or you can do like a 5K run or whatever. Bunch of different stuff. Check it out. I'll put the link in the description. But that's why I have a mustache. Yeah. yeah. Um, just thought I'd get that out of the way first. Yes. Nice. Um, hey, I watched a movie last night. You did. I did. Uh, I watched a very long movie. I watched a movie called Eternals. Uh, uh, yes. <laughs> and I would like to start off by uh, by reading my review of okay. Eternals. Um, does this contain spoilers? This does not contain spoilers. Okay, cool. Um, uh, very minor spoilers, but nothing... Like, it, it kind of just like the name of one of the enemies, but that's it. Okay. Um, I will also say I have a Letterboxd account now if you want to follow me, Frank Mankin on Letterboxd. Um, mm. I've been writing some hackers reviews. You write a lot of reviews. Um, and I'm really enjoying it. I'm having a really good time. So yeah. that's been fun. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to read my review and then we can talk about it a little bit afterwards. Mm -hmm. um, so <clears throat> in the session prior to mine, someone had thrown something at the screen, leaving a big brown stain in the dead center. Watching the sludge slowly slide down the screen over the course of the three hours it took to trudge through Eternals was infinitely more entertaining than the contents of this terribly pieced together work that I could barely call a film. Okay, wait, can we stop there? <laughs> can we just unpack that for a minute? <laughs> so someone threw something Yeah, there was at just the like screen. a big, like in the center of the screen, it was like just some, some Coke or something that someone had thrown at the screen. What? <laughs> which I assume was at a prior screening for Eternals. <laughs> <laughs> and they just really didn't like it. <laughs> Huh. Yeah. They didn't clean it up? Did no, they didn't clean it. Anyone know about it? And it was just like slowly going down the screen That's as the disgusting. movie progressed. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, okay. I'm going to keep going. Yep. I truly don't know where to begin with Eternals, but I'll start by saying this. Australia consistently sees the short end of the stick in every movie release. We get the best movies three months late, and the worst always arrived well before the US counterparts. Having the opportunity to see this in cinemas early was a horror in and of itself, and I feel no joy in having seen it early. <laughs> Firstly, the story is some of the most abysmal writing I've seen from Marvel to date. Oh. Very there are strong words. <laughs> there are plot holes galore, subplots that take up significant amounts of screen time that ultimately amount to unsatisfying conclusions, i.e. the entire Deviant's plotline, or no conclusions at all. And on the whole, the story contradicts itself at every twist and turn. A great example of these issues is the opening crawl. It sets up much of this new world, and then within the first 20 minutes immediately contradicts this information and goes back on itself to try to justify the new decisions it's made. This is my favourite paragraph I wrote, ready? Okay. This is a bloated, unholy mess of writing that should have been entirely scrapped for a script written by a competent team of writers who were willing to kill their darlings and put together a film that doesn't feel like the incoherent ramblings of a senile old man who vaguely remembers the tales of Olympus and is recounting them to his grandchildren through the lens of his debilitating opioid addiction. Wow. Following That's the very... <laughs> this is not a good movie. <laughs> Following the horrific writing I could barely piece together, the editing, special effects, colour grading and general presentation of this film is some of the worst I've seen in recent years. The general structure for each scene of, of Eternals is as follows. 1. Exposition heavy piece of dialogue acted poorly. 2. Shot of a face, item or location that's held for an uncom uncomfortably long amount of time. 3. Fight scene deliberately paced, sorry, fight scene deliberately placed because film is getting boring. 4. Rinse and repeat until climactic CGI heavy showdown at the end of the movie. Right. In particular, the fight scenes are near impossible to follow. There are a mess of CGI hair and bodies throwing themselves at each other, followed by poorly placed cuts back to the actual actors trying their hardest to mimic the final pose their CGI double finishes in. It's horrifying and some of the worst uncanny valley effects I've seen in a while. Eternals is bad, irredeemably so, but it's saved from a one-star rating purely on the backs of Brian Tyree Henry and Kit Harrington's performances and some well-placed jokes and set design here and there. There are also a few shots that I thought were quite beautiful, but they were few and far between, and it was clear that Zhao has fought to keep them in. 
I truly hope Disney doesn't learn the wrong lesson from this. Chloe Zhao is not entirely to blame for this mess. I'm sure her vision for this film was different and has been and it has been meddled with heavily by the studio. The lesson to be learned here is not don't give art house directors opportunities, but let them express themselves creatively through your IPs. Don't pay to see this. Wait until it appears on Disney Plus and then subject yourself to this ordeal while distracted by something else. Maybe fold your laundry or organize your sock drawer at the same time. Eternals is not worth sitting in a cinema for three hours to see. In fact, it's barely worth sitting through it all. Wow. Two out of five stars. Jeez. <laughs> hmm. So not a good movie. <laughs> not a good movie Not a good all. movie. I see. <laughs> it was really bad. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that's, that's pretty much my thoughts on the movie. Um, right. <laughs> it's right, terrible. Right, right, right. I had a lot of fun making fun of it during the movie. I went and saw it with a friend of mine and, and we just made fun of the movie the entire time. Yeah, okay. Um, the first 30 minutes are very good. Right. I really enjoyed the first 30 minutes of the movie and then it all falls apart. Huh. Yeah. Just like story or just kind of... Everything. 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 Just everything. Like mm. the, the story, the, the costumes, the set design, the, the CGI, everything just falls apart. That's strange. Yeah. I didn't care. I don't remember any of the characters either. I genuinely don't know any of their <laughs> names. Oh no, it's a lie. I know two of them. I know two of their names. Right. Um, yeah, it's it's it is just that bad. Hmm. Like I, I went into it prepared for it to be a bad movie. Yeah, and, and then you were I disappointed. And then I walked out of a, a worse movie. <laughs> wow, that's yeah. bad. Yeah, right. So. I have no idea where they're going to go with this mm. uh, in the in the coming months, in the next couple of movies. Um, but man, it was it was really something. Yeah, okay. Um, it was it was worse than Thor: The Dark World. Whoa, okay. Yeah, but that was yeah, that was pretty average. This is this is not just average. This is this bad. is just bad. Like oh. I, I I vividly remember last night watching it and having. Um, and, and getting to a point in the movie where I was like, oh, I feel like this is kind of like, you know, coming towards the end of the movie. Mm. And I, ch- I quickly like checked my phone in my pocket. I was like, what time is it? It'd been an hour. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. And this is the thing that the movie does a lot that really, that really, really got to me, really got under my skin. The movie has several, like probably five or six times feels like it's about to wrap up mm. and then doesn't. Uh, and then it throws something else in that it'll like continue as as you go. Yeah. Um, and there's a whole storyline. Like I, I mentioned it in the review, the deviance plotline. I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of skirt around this, um, without trying to spoil too much. But mm. essentially, the first hour and a half of this movie are the are all about the deviants and this one like big daddy deviant who's like pretty damn scary. Yeah. Like that's pretty much the the gist of it. Mm-hmm. Um and so the first hour and a half you're following that and all of a sudden out of nowhere this whole other like massive plot line comes into play and that kind of just gets forget forgotten about. Like the the big bad guy of the movie up to this point literally just walks away and the movie forgets about him for an hour. Right. <laughs> okay. And then they go through this whole new storyline and they come to the conclu- the logical conclusion of that storyline mm. and then in the big final climactic fight scene between the new villain while they're like trying to fix this big final like story beat they're like on this island in the middle of nowhere in the middle of like the Pacific Ocean and the, b- <laughs> the other big bad guy from like two hours before just like walks up onto the beach <laughs> and he's just like swam there or something <laughs> He just arrives. Like, there's no, yeah. there's no reason for him to be there. He does. There's no way for him to know that they're there. Yeah. He just arrives there, um, right. and then, and then his plotline gets resolved in the most unceremonious, unsatisfying ending I have ever seen in a movie. Yeah. It's literally just like, oh, this guy's here. Let's really quickly deal with that, and then we'll go back to what we were doing before. Oh, that's so dumb. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um. Yeah. I don't really have anything to say for this. Yeah. I just feel like I have to watch it. You do, but don't watch. Just wait for it to come out on Disney Plus I, in like two I months. Want, I kind of want to see it in cinema okay. to have that experience. Of okay. Like, if you want to subject yourself to this, I, I won't stop you. But yeah. <laughs> just oh, the advantage though, <laughs> this, is my fa- <laughs> this is my favorite part. The advantage of watching it in cinemas, mm-hmm. it's been out in Australia for four days, five days now, I think. Yeah. 
Um, <laughs> they're already saved for tickets. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I, got, I got two tickets for 20 bucks. <laughs> right. They're already <laughs> cheap. Yeah. No one wants to see this movie. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, it was great. It was so good. Um, but yeah, so, um, it, yeah, it's bad. It's just bad. It's just bad. It's just bad. <laughs> and I have nothing else to say about it. Okay. That's, that's it. Uh, don't watch it. If, if you want to watch it, you can. I don't think, I think you can genuinely skip this movie. Yeah. It didn't really feel like it had any. It adds nothing. No. No. Like literally nothing. But it, There's no foreseeable stuff that it could have. Oh, they, okay. So they set up, they do set up, um, uh, two new. Uh, like superheroes within it, and then obviously also the Eternals. Um, mm. but they do set up two new ones, so um, I might really quickly spoil these because they're not like very, they're not related to the movie at all, mm. and this is gonna show up anyway. Um, so skip like a minute ahead if you don't want to hear this. Yeah. Um, so Harry Styles is in this in a post credit <laughs> sequence. Um, he is playing Eros, uh, who is Thanos's brother. Um, oh. and he's like a superhero, so he's. I think he's going to become like the the new the the Marvel Superman essentially. Yeah. Um so that's interesting. He does the weirdest American accent I've ever seen. Yeah. Um he's only in it for like 30 seconds, but um he's his costume looks good and he looks really nice in mm. the movie. So I hope that that becomes something interesting. I'm genuinely excited about that. I don't like how they're starting <coughs> to bring in these already known people though. Yeah. I did the one thing I loved about Marvel is that they had a lot of people that were like, didn't have a massive like, breaks before yeah, this. Like Chris Hemsworth and yeah. Tom Hiddleston. Yep. Yeah. And, I don't know, the the chick that plays the Loki. What are, what are her name? Sylvie. Sylvie, yeah. Sylvie something. Yeah. Um, no, Sylvie is her character name. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, yeah, but, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Um, and then the other one, which I am really excited about, but I have no idea if it's going to be good or not. In fact, I'm pretty sure it's going to be bad. Mm. Um, but... R- <laughs> <laughs> Kit Harrington's character, right? Yeah. Is in this movie for maybe 15 minutes total. Right. He's kind of just in it at the start and then he's in it for a little bit at the end. Um, and right at the end of the movie, like right before the credits roll, he's like trying to tell the, the main character um, something about his like family history or something. Mm. Anyway, something else happens. So he doesn't get to tell her that. And then the post post credit scene, like right after the big credits is um, him like finding a sword um, from his family and it's like a magic oh. sword. Um, so he's going to, so I looked it up. He's going to become Black Knight, which is like a Marvel, a very, very minor, That's, minor Marvel character. Yeah. Um, so I'm very interested to see how that goes. Mm. I have no clue if that's going to be good or not, but I do really like Kit Harrington, and so I'm really keen to see him yeah. in a Marvel movie. So, mm. yeah. So Interesting. The, the things... No, I'll say it like this, and, I, and then we'll finish on this so we can talk about your thing, but um, the, the things that this movie sets up, mm. I'm excited for. The movie itself, I'm never watching again. <laughs> okay. Like genuinely, you could have told the entire story of this movie in a ten-minute flashback sequence in another movie. Or oh. I said this this morning um, when I was talking to someone else about it. Um, you very you just as easily could have taken the main story beats of this because because a big part of this mo- movie, like two hours of this movie, is the Eternals like finding each other again. So like yeah. rebuilding the team. You could have just as easily split that up into a bunch of different Marvel movies. Uh, and have uh, them tie into their stories. And then when all the other Marvel characters come back together, then the Eternals come back together. Right. And I yeah, think that, that would have be been cool. much more rewarding because then you you get attached to each of these characters individually mm. rather than just like having them throw nine new characters at you out of nowhere. Yeah. Like that'd be like if they started with the Avengers times two. Like, they just started there. <laughs> yeah, right. With no context. Yeah, that's bad. Yeah. So, yeah. In, excited to see where they go with this. Not excited that this movie exists. Is it... I don't remember. How well did Age of Ultron do when it came out? Do you remember? It did okay. Would you reckon this could be, like, another Age of Ultron? Where it didn't do amazing when it came out, but it's... It, like, I feel like it's gotten better over no. time. No? No. No. Because I enjoyed Age of Ultron when it came out. Yeah, okay. I did not. Yeah. Well, not really. I, I've, I actually very regularly rewatch Age of Ultron. Yeah. 
Um, mind them. But the difference is Age of Ultron is still a well put together movie. <laughs> it's just like not for, it's just long. Yeah. I like it, it's a well put together movie that overextends its welcome. This yeah. is just a bad movie that also overextends its welcome, <laughs> which is significantly worse. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That's pretty bad. Anyway, I'm going to stop talking about this movie. Um, yep. But if you want to go watch it, I'm not going to stop you, but I'm telling you now it's a bad idea. Also, follow me on Letterboxd. All right. <laughs> um, what's your thing? Um, well, I want to talk a little bit about uh, more movies and like surround sound. Okay. And, and even more specifically, the Sonos. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I feel like I've had... I've had some experience with it now, and yep. you obviously have a lot of experience with it. Yeah. Have you listened to? Have you watched many movies in five point one with the new surround sound stuff? Um, actually, not really. Uh, uh not a not a bunch. I haven't used it that much, but from what I have watched, hmm. it's been very good. I watched Taxi Driver the other night, um, oh, yeah. the classic from seventy six with Robert De Niro. Yeah. Um, and watching that in surround sound was was an experience because yeah. you've got the whole like cityscape around you, which I, th- yeah. which I found really, really cool. Mm. Um, but yeah, anyway, so yeah. Um, cause I remember you showing me that scene from Mandalorian, uh, Mandalorian yeah, yeah. In 5.1 and kind of looking back at that. Do you want to describe what 5.1 is quickly? Just yeah. Like so it's surround sound, which is, um, there's five speakers and then the point one is the sub. So you've got center left and right. Uh, and then two, um, a left and right surround that's behind the listener. Yeah. So that's your five, and then the point one is the sub, and it's point one because it's only like ten percent of the frequency spectrum or something like that. Yeah. But yeah. it gives you the big whoops. Yeah. The the wub wubs. The wub wubs. Well, you, you shouldn't actually be able to hear a sub. You just feel just it. Just feel it. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, we can talk about frequencies and stuff <laughs> another time. <laughs> um, but yeah. So you showed me that scene and. The scene was when uh, Osaka was fighting some chick. I don't know who she was anymore. Um, and she had like this really strong spear, which was made out of, do you remember? Beskar. It was a Beskar, Beskar spear. That's it. Um, I was going to say vibranium, but that's the wrong that's, thing. I was thinking vibranium <laughs> too. <laughs> um, and it was just a really kind of epic fight scene with lots and lots of sound design stuff and yeah. and really cool um, atmospheric things. Um, and looking back at that, I was a little disappointed with the 5.1 mixing of it. Ah, oh, of the, the show itself. Yeah. Right. Well, I haven't, I probably haven't seen enough, but that scene kind of, I would, is, I was, would have expected more from that scene. Interesting. Um, and so the, the kind of classic way and like. I guess this is kind of hard because it came out on streaming services, so they're not really expecting a lot of people to have 5.1 systems. Yeah. Um, so I guess they didn't put a whole lot of effort into it. But I've been pretty disappointed lately with how films have been going about mixing them, and I feel like they haven't done a lot creatively. And I guess, I guess the whole like, you know, it's all coming out streaming now straight away rather than theatrical releasing. Which um, actually, really quickly, yeah. I will say, they make a joke about that in Eternals oh, and they? I pissed myself laughing <laughs> because they just immediately kneecapped themselves. Because in the movie, they're like, someone was like, uh, who's like, who hasn't been in humanity for, for a couple, like a, d- a decade or something. Mm. Um, she goes like, oh, um, I, don't, I don't have those on DVDs. And he goes, oh, it's not about DVDs anymore. It's all about streaming services. And I was like, you've just kneecapped yourself. Yeah, what? <laughs> like... <laughs> Anyway, sorry, carry right. on. Um, yeah. So, yeah, kind of the classic way of mixing is that you put, like, dialogue in the middle, or, you know, the safe way. You put dialogue in the center speaker, predominantly, um, and then sort of atmosphere in the left and right and behind, but mostly music in the front left and right and then atmosphere in, in the back ones. Yeah. Um, and then there's it's kind of just whatever goes in the sub goes in the sub. And... Unfortunately, that's exactly what I got from from uh, Mandalorian. Yeah, I there was dialogue right in the center, the um, music in the left and right, and then atmosphere in the back. And I was like, ah, okay. So it was fine, but I would like to see people do more creative stuff now with yeah. five point one. Um, so like, I don't know, putting even like the lightsaber hits when they were hitting the spear. 
if that had like bounced around, you know, mm. how cool would that be? Because it, they were in like this, like they were boxed in. Yeah. So that would bounce around in there and whatever. Yeah. Um, different, just different things like that. Because nowadays it's all just let's put all the atmosphere in the back and then whatever, and everything you need to hear in the front, and then that's it. Yeah. Done. Five point one. Check. Yeah. And it's just a bit sad. Mm. You want more? Yeah. You need yeah. more creative stuff, I think. Mm. Um, and then that adds to the experience. I'm trying to think of like a really good example. Um, I don't know. It's been too long since I've been in cinemas. Um, well, Black Widow was all right with it, actually. That was Did you watch Black Widow in cinemas? Yeah. Oh. Um, that was okay. There was more atmosphere just around rather than just in the back. Yeah. Um, and, you know, if there was flyovers and stuff like that, they obviously put that from the back to the front. Um, and it felt less like the dialogue was coming just out of the center. Yeah. Um, that's something that annoys me a lot is like, if there's a character on this side of the screen, it's like, oh, but the dialogue's over there. You know, <laughs> <laughs> why, why is it over there? But I want it there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so then looping that back to your Sonos, uh, quick like little review of that. Uh-huh. Uh, it's great. I love it. There's lots of high end in it though, which is interesting for like a home system. Yeah. Because you'd expect, well, I would expect not a lot of high so that people can turn it up and not be like, this is hurting my ears. Yeah. You know? Um, which is the the biggest problem that I have with it. Yeah. The, it, like I can't turn it up a lot without it being painful. Yeah. Um, but then I think that's how it um that's also how systems make it sound good. Or you're like, oh it sounds so clear because it's lot just lots of high end. Yeah. Um which is fine, but I think Sonos does it well enough um that it doesn't you know, it doesn't take away from the experience. Yeah. Um and what's very surprising with those like sound bars these days is there's a very clear center and then left and right um i don't know if you've noticed that yeah but i I wonder if they like point outwards or something i don't know but it's very obvious that there's three different signals going into yeah which is cool um yeah i don't know just i just want to see more from 5.1 yeah and i wonder if eternals does anything with all these demons and stuff nothing exciting no i want i want like in fact the sound design was Really bad. Oh, really? Like, that's something that I didn't mention in the review, but, yeah, it, it was so unimaginative. Ugh, that's like, the, 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 the terrifying alien monster things sound just like bears. <laughs> it's just a growl. Great. There's Great. no, like, gross, like, you know, slurpy sounds or anything. That's what you'd expect, all the, like, yeah, the mouth chopping and Yeah, stuff. right? I'd expect, yeah. like, a... Yeah. Particularly if they look... Like that, kind of all bony and yeah. No, they they just they just sound like. <laughs> ah, you'd hear like bones cracking and yeah, yeah, yeah. But whatever, gonna make them spooky as flop, spooky. Um, yeah, mm. I don't know. I guess would you say maybe there's not as much of an art to it now as there used to be? Oh, just definitely. Sound design. I think people discount it very easily as mm. well. Like as long as it sounds okay, okay, they're like, yep, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mm. I'm going to quickly derail you. Yeah. Uh, we have through. five minutes left. Yeah. Do you really want to quickly give your... Sorry, phone. Do you really <laughs> do you really quickly want to give your thoughts on June now that you've seen it? Oh, yes. Uh, I loved it. Nothing like what I expected. No. Uh, I expected... I, I hadn't really... Because it was like delayed a whole bunch. So I hadn't really put... Focused on it at all since like the initial trailer i was expecting it to just be like these people fighting these big uh the big sandworms and that was kind of it yeah um, so nothing like what i expected with the whole um like political stuff and just the fact that it wasn't like there was three sandworms in it the whole movie sort of thing yeah um I, it, <laughs> it was just fantastic i don't i don't really know what to say about it i didn't have an issue with any of the vfx or the shots there was there was one that you said where the mask pops up on someone and it's 
I think that's just the way that the mask sits on his face. Yeah, it just looks a bit weird. Yeah. Um, which is fine, I guess. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I just, I think that's just a costume thing. Yeah. Um, but otherwise the costumes all look pretty legit. Um, all the sets look great. The worms don't actually look as good as I was hoping. I don't oh, think. really? Yeah. Interesting. I really like how simple the worms are. They are very simple. I don't know. I just, I just think I expected more, maybe mm. more teeth or something. Right. You know. But yeah, fair yeah. enough. I really like how simple they are because it's just like these things have one purpose. Like they just to eat. Like it just it works. Like it, they are what they yeah. are. You know. Like that's the way that I saw it at least. Yeah. Fair. Um. Yeah. Other than that, I'm trying to think. Sound design. Oh, the little um, the little. Shield thingies? They, they, no, the Hunter Seekers or whatever they do. Oh, called. yeah. They sounded so good. Yeah. And the all the scenes with them in it, like, it seemed very creative where it was, you know, the, it's really easy to fall into the trap, I guess, these days with, you know, oh, that it sounds realistic. We'll go with that. Yeah. Whereas, like, you need that, you know, when it comes right up to his face and then it's, like, suddenly, s- like, exceptionally loud. Yeah. But it wouldn't be in that situation. Like, it'd probably be really quiet. Um, and, yeah, that sort of thing. It was just, it kind of, it added to the suspense, which is really cool. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I don't know. I just really liked it. Very good. It was very good. I'm so excited to watch it in IMAX. Yeah, I really can't I'm, wait. I, I'm so excited. <laughs> All right. Um, we got to wrap it up, actually. Already? Yeah. Man. I know. It goes quick, hey. It does. It goes quick when you complain. Yeah. We just co- we complained yeah. for twenty five minutes and then like praised June for two and we're like all right cool yeah, cool done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm so excited to watch June in, in theaters though I want to watch that on a massive mm. screen I just want that experience I just want cinemas aren't loud enough these days though I think it's just because I've studied sound too much I just want yeah louder you're like give me, give me all the sound <laughs> I don't care about the turn the screen off I don't need it give me the sound I even went to an event on Sunday and I knew someone who was running the sound and I was just like get turned up please. <laughs> <laughs> of course you did <laughs> alright thank you so much for watching this episode or yeah. listening to this episode of The Fro Show we hope we got you to work or home safely um, you should go watch June uh, don't go watch The Eternals uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much and we'll see you next week bye bye bye, bye.